So I think you should all apply for fellowships. You're all uh, here because you're smart, successful people. And so I think you're all good candidates. We should just give you one right away. So you walk out the door, we'll just give you a little secret. Okay, so this is you, and this is the process. We'll talk about this uh, sort of black box, this white box here, and this is the, uh, the end result that could happen. So you could support yourself as a grad student, and as I said, be a hero to your lab right away. So uh, Kelsey helped me put together these, some of these slides. We're going to talk about two of the main agencies, the federal funding agency. So one is uh, NSERC, okay? We have a micro for anyone who knows what NSERC stands for. Or can say it in French, okay. All right, I got slow, okay. So whoever started talking first? Who was the person talking first? National Science and Engineering Research Council. What was the first word? Natural. 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 Natural science. Yeah, I was thinking it's natural, too. That was close. That one for each. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm French. Conseil. 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 Yeah, genie is engineering, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. What about in German? <laughs> I'm sure in German it's one word. <laughs> Two German grad students. I have to convince them that cell biology is not one word. Okay. All right. So they have uh, two flavors of scholarships that differ by two hundred dollars. The better students get two hundred dollars more. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So you have to be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. Hold a first. Uh, hold a degree in science or engineering by the time the award will start. Okay. So if you have not yet have your Bachelors, you can be so eligible. And uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, they go look at grades. So they want a, whatever they call first class or A minus average in your last two years of full time study. So if you took one course last year and it was swimming and you got an A, that probably doesn't count for the full year. <laughs> and the deadline is uh, October 15th, usually. And everything is done online these days. This is Form 200, I don't know what happened to Forms 1 through 199, but the word is good. And then you need letters from your uh, sponsors and transfers. So we'll talk about it. So NSERC, let's talk about the different agencies. So there's the CHR, Canadian Institutes of Health Research. So if you're doing research on biomedical research, healthcare delivery, Aboriginal health, and there's one more pillar that I, social, like, aspects of health, uh, then CHR would be one for you. NSERC is much broader. They, they fund you know, biology, which is all one panel. They've got like 100 panels, so they do all the engineering, uh, physical sciences. And then there's a, an analog of uh, NSERC called SHRC, Social Sciences, it's an age, health, health Research Council, maybe. Social Science and Humanities? Humanities. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Research Council. So if you're doing more uh, social aspects, SHRC might be more appropriate for you. And they're very analogous to uh, NSERC. So depending on what your interest is, you might apply to CHR or NSERC. Uh, you can only apply to one. You can't apply to both. They're, they're trying to lighten their load of reviewing a bit. Okay, so if you're more biomedical, probably CHR is more relevant. There are many other agencies. Every province, well, many provinces have their own agency. In British Columbia, it's the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research, and Alberta is the Alberta Heritage Foundation. There are private agencies for many different things, especially different disease agencies. So in, I know here, our students apply to the Cancer Research Society, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, the Arthritis Society. So there are many specific ones you can apply to. So those provincial ones, are they relevant to your current undergrad or to the graduate school, where your graduate school? Uh, to, they, they fund the research where your graduate school would be. Okay, so if you're, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're coming from Alberta and you're going to do graduate school at BC, you can be supported by the Michael Smith Foundation. Okay. If you're from BC but going to Alberta, you'd be supported by the Alberta Heritage Foundation. I'm sorry, over here. First. Which two do you say you can't apply to? You can't apply to NSERC and CHR in the same year. You have to choose one or the other. So can you apply to both, but you have to one or the other, or yeah. You just no, you have to pick one. They'll reject your application if it's been applied, if it's sent to the other. Yeah. Um, my school doesn't use letter grades, so what's an A minus in? Oh, we have a big table. We figure it out. Seven and a half out of nine, or 
you know, 12 out of 14 or whatever. They'll tell you, whatever it equivalent to an A minus is. Okay, we'll go here and then back here. Um, I just took a year off, so when you're talking about first class average in the last two years, full time, yeah. would that just be the two years prior? To yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've been a year off, they would look at the last two years. Okay. Or if your last year was some sort of partial year, they would look at the two years before. Okay. Okay. Um, what if you went on exchange in your last two years and then your grades transfer over as just pass or fail? How do they, how do they calculate uh, I don't know. How they do with pass fail grades? Uh, I don't know. They would uh, most likely ask for like a letter or something to explain your grades in those two years. Um, if you got any fails, it's probably would be good to apply. If you got all passes, then you know you'll have a likely chance of being awarded. Um, we figure it out in crazy ways that are hard to explain. It's case by case basis is how it's done. And so it looks, you, they look at your grades and also your recommendations. Like that. So if you have passes, and then if, you know if you submit your full transcript, so your first two years at uh, your undergrad, you know you have all A's or whatever, they'll also see those too. So they'll know that you're going to be. Okay. And we're also used to interpreting foreign transcripts yeah. in, in various ways, and we try to put them in context. I know the German grades, you know, they still go this way. They go from six up to one, except no one ever gets a one. And so we try to figure out where the cutoff is. There's a there's a whole um, international student evaluation manual post on the grad study website. So under the um, how to apply section at the very bottom you can select your country and then they'll tell you what's first class average and what's not um, on there. So that's a good resource to look at um, or you can just contact your, your own undergrad school. Or if you have really complicated questions you can contact CHR or NSIC directly. Okay. So a couple more. So what do they apply? What do they consider full time? It's generally 60% um, course load, so um, at UBC there'll be 12 credits. Can you tell me about your typical I'm sorry? Are you said proposal? Yeah, we're not up to that yet. We're still stuck on grades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good grades are a uh, good idea. Okay, so this relates to the question that Phil in the back was at asking before. So this is something that Kelsey gave us for answering about whether you apply directly or through your undergraduate university. So if you're currently at a university, you're on a leave of absence from one, you go through your university. If you're at a foreign university, you go directly to NSER. If you've been at a Canadian university, but you're not in a degree program now, but it's less than 12 months since you left through the university, you're just not associated with the university at all, directly to NSER. All this is on their website. And your university, regardless of what, or any university that you were thinking of applying to, would be happy to advise you. Okay, so CHR is the uh, Banting and Best, it's called now, Canada Graduate Scholarship. So, what are these guys, Banting and Best, famous for? Insolence. <laughs> Good. And their master's award is about the same amount of money for one year. So often a lot of the master's awards, because they're based mostly on your previous grades, your undergraduate researcher for one year, and then when they finish, you would apply for a PhD level award or another master's level award. And getting one award is like a, a good predictor of getting the next award. So one of your qualifications for getting the next award is I've already had one. So once you get one, you're sort of like on this track. So it's good to keep getting it. Uh, again, you have to be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. So again, if you're not, a lot of the private disease agencies don't care so much about that, so you're eligible for those things. And often the universities have additional scholarships. So we have at UBC, well, they change their name every year, on UGF, a University Graduate Fellowship. And people, no, they're not eligible for that either? No, more students are. Uh, there is no more. No more, they have something else, four-year fellowship. Four-year fellowship. Okay. The 4YF award. Yeah, yeah. Foreign students are eligible for that. Yeah. Okay. They all got um, information in their welcoming packages about the new scholarship. Good. There's lots of information in the packages about this. Yep. And it's good for those four years to pay for it. So they should almost finish their PhD in four years. So again, uh, to register.